Hi, welcome to SPR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. It's college football week nine, and this is the Into the Weekend uh, with Beth DSI show, where we get the always very interesting information from Brent, the headlines manager of DSI Sportsbook, about the notable sharp and public action that he's taken over the course of the week. Brent, the first game I want to ask about, Notre Dame Temple. Now, uh, at first glance, this might be a game where uh, you might think, ah, oh, the Sharps came in, would come in on the... Uh, on the home underdog and and the public all on the uh, big road favorite, but uh, well, first of all, I'm sure that the public is big on Notre Dame. But look, think, thinking about it more and looking into this game more, I'm actually going to guess that uh, there hasn't been any notable sharp action on Temple, and that you did take, uh, if anything, you took some respectable action at Notre Dame at uh, minus nine and a half. Is that? But the public's definitely overwhelmingly on Notre Dame. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean uh, that's typical, you know, what you expect. Uh, again, the, the count isn't really that crazy in favor of Notre Dame, which I mean you would expect it to be um, mostly public action. We've taken on this one, Peter, Notre Dame minus 10 and kind of going up. Our money does favor Notre Dame. Our count slightly favors Notre Dame, but it's not, you know, not anything crazy. Um, I've got, you know, just mostly public money driving Notre Dame. Not, not really huge volume on this game as of yet. Um, the, the total, I did take respectable money on the under 50. Mm. We're only sitting at 49 and a half because I do have more bets on the over there. But yeah, that's, that's really the only thing involved in this game is, is just kind of respectable money on, on, the, uh, on the total of under 50. Um, another guy actually who's, who's not bad went over the 49. So it's kind of like, you know, one guy's under 50, another guy's over 49. Let's, let's put 49 and a half now and see how that works. So that's where right. we are in the total right now. But it kind of got bounced back and forth on the side. Though really, really nothing notable to report, just the... Uh, it's just, just the public money driving Notre Dame. I guess that's uh, what I would have expected. And then Georgia-Florida, always a, a big game. This year, a very competitive spread, so I'm guessing high betting volume on this one, probably split down the middle as far as the public is concerned. Sharps, I'm not sure. I'm guessing that uh, maybe one respectable account on Georgia. I don't know. What, do you, what can you tell us about it, Brent? Yeah, again, we'll talk count. First off, in terms of the number of wagers I've taken, they're about uh, almost two to one in favor of Georgia, so nothing huge. Mm -hmm. Money, about two to one in favor of Georgia. Again, nothing, nothing huge either way there. So that, that's kind of like you know, kind of a tip, typical game you would say. Um, the only money we have on Georgia was at plus three. We're sitting at two and a half right now on Florida, and the money that I got on Florida was kind of like uh, you know minus one, minus two, two and a half. So we're kind of bouncing between. Like I said. Other than other than three, we've had no money on, on Georgia. So we're sitting at two and a half. We've taken no bets on Georgia at plus two and a half. So that kind of might be telling. But as soon as we hit three, boom, they came on, on Georgia. Again, respectable money on both sides of this. Like I, right. I said, the guys that are quite respectable on Georgia minus the – or sorry, Florida on the minus two and a half and the minus one and a half. Respectable guys on, on Georgia as well, plus the three. And actually, the, the total is the same situation. I have a, a ton of wagering volume on the total. My count is almost dead even. My money's almost dead even. Uh, over 45 was very respectable money, under 47 and a half, and 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 such was was uh, very respectable money as well. So I'm sitting with a huge count on this game and huge dollar volume, and it's one of those cases where it just kind of like the number just seems right. You know, every now and then right. the bookmakers line guys come up and they do yeah. get a number right. So the total over 45, very respectable, under 47 and a half, very respectable. Public kind of batting it back and forth, and same thing on the side. Anything you know. One and a half, two and a half on Florida. They're betting that anything plus three. They're taking on Georgia, so it's it's a great count for us. And and, and you know, as long as it doesn't land three, and we we push the Georgia money, we'll be fine. Okay, and then Stanford, Washington State. Both these teams have been killing it. ATS recently. Uh, I'm guessing the public is on Stanford. The line though has gone significantly down since it opened. I saw it market wide at about 13 when it opened. Now it's all the way down to like 10, 10 and a half, 11 market wide. Uh, so that could be indicative of a uh, significant sharp public split here with the uh, with the sharps on Washington State. Is that what drove the uh, Washington State line down, Brent? Well, let's play six degrees of separation with Washington <laughs> State for a moment here. I mean, they're they're five and two, and they opened up with a loss. A loss at home to who, Pete? Uh, Portland State. That's right. Off the Port top of my head. Portland State. And how's Portland State doing? Six and one. Not bad, right? Right. But the one loss they have, North Dakota. North Dakota, since beating Portland State, has lost three states. North Dakota's four and four, Peter. None of this, none of this makes any sense. Brent, Brent with, the, with the science, breaking it down for us. Wow, thanks, Brent. But, no, I, I'm breaking it down. I'm telling you, it makes no sense to me. I'm, yeah. I'm discombobulated, Peter. A college football <laughs> is a baffling, mysterious animal, Brent. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just crazy. Um, Washington State, though, is kind of a, one of those teams where people like to back now and they're putting up a ton of points and their the quarterback Falk is just lightning. I mean, if, if he doesn't throw, you know, five or six uh, touchdowns a game, it's kind of like a, a bad game for him lately, it seems. Um, 
I do have, again, decent money in this game. You're looking at Stanford uh, as a road favorite of 10.5 right now, total sitting at 62. I did get, you know, respectable money under the 62.5, but not not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. The count is almost like 5-1 to one on the over. So that's that's the public, you know, who want to, you yeah. know, they see Stanford scoring a lot of points. You can really easily like how Washington State's putting up a lot of big numbers. So you're not surprising at all to see the public on the over there. Again, the count almost 5-1. to one. The only respectable money I have is under 62 and a half, but we're still at 62. Just got, you know, even though with the sharp respectable money on the under, I still have more money on the the over, and uh, you know, I, I expect that to continue that way. In terms of the side itself, the only again, this is this is one of those cases I got respectable money, not you know sharp money, or the sharp money I do have is kind of going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have you know decent money on Washington State at uh, plus 13 and plus 11 and a half. And uh, nothing really on Stanford in terms of what I would call sharp money and under 62 and a half and 63 on the total. So it's not really a sharp public split or anything like that mm-hmm. because I really don't have a ton of action on, on Stanford at this point. But what I have taken in terms of the bigger bets, definitely Washington State. Again, it's about the number, you know, getting right. 11 and a half and 13. And the total, again, was like 63 and under, under 63 and under 62 and a half. So big bets are what drove the, uh, the number on Washington State down, but not, uh, not the clear sharp action. All right, so I asked you about three. Three interesting games this week, Brent. No uh, clear sharp action has come in on any of them. What can you tell us about the rest of the card for uh, college football week nine? Well, first off, I want to have a moment of silence for those who bet uh, UMass last week. UMass, the home dog, up 28-10 at the half. You go to the bathroom, you come back, and you find out that, you, that Toledo went on a 38-0 one, and you're down yes. 48-28. So was that, was yeah. that a game where you had sharp action either way? Uh, we did have sharp action actually on the dog on on UMass. Mm. Yeah, I mean it was just a, a bad bad beat because I mean you at UMass finally did score late in the fourth quarter. They gave up a uh, field goal with like I don't know it was like under three minutes left for Toledo to win by 16. And now if you're catching 14, and you lose that way. Well, that's a that's a bitter pill to swallow. But those guys have more money than they need, so they can afford right. a bad beat every now and then. <laughs> Uh, talking about uh, notable action this week, I just want to touch on before we get to the, the specific sharp sides, um, mm-hmm. Marshall and Charlotte, just one of those games out of the blue. You, you look at our chart and it's just like massive in terms of the betting volume we have. Wow. Um, a lot of dog money on Charlotte plus 18 and a half and plus 17 and a half. We have sharp money on Marshall minus 15 and a half as well. So line is Marshall minus 17 at Charlotte this week. I just want to mention it just because it's just a ton of volume that you wouldn't normally expect. Mm-hmm. Um, Central Central Florida and uh, Cincinnati is another game like that. Um, just uh, Central Florida money plus 28 was very sharp. Mm. Sharp money on Cincinnati minus 26. So we're sitting at uh, 27 and a half right now. Cincinnati's at home fair by 27 and a half at home to Central Florida. But again, it's just not, you know, two of those games are not what you would want to expect in terms of like having as much action as they do. But the Cincinnati, bet, probably want, the Cincinnati that, minus 26 was a list guy or was that just a, a big bet guy? It, it's a guy who is a, a winning customer, put it that okay. way. Now, okay. it's a guy who typically does does well across all sports, not specifically right. sharp in, in college football per se, but uh, there's a, a couple of guys actually on, the, on Cincinnati minus 26, mm-hmm. and again, a, a guy who does make the list who's on the plus 28 with mm-hmm. Central Florida, so it's quite interesting right. with the, the betting point we have there. Um, I know that you did want to ask me about the uh, Michigan at Minnesota game, but in, in the interest of time and being kind to me, you didn't bring it up. But I do want to say that's another one of those games where I've got a ton of wagering volume. Uh, Michigan minus 12 and minus 13 was, was sharp, and uh, Minnesota plus 14 also very sharp. So mm. just wanted to mention those off the top. Yeah. And getting to the, the sharp stuff you want to talk about, uh, Rutgers and Wisconsin, the total there is, is sharp for us. We've got the over 50 as, as very sharp. We're up to 51.5 right now. That's Rutgers at Wisconsin. So 51 and a half the number now. The Sharps went over 50. Uh, Georgia State and Arkansas State, another game that just makes you want to you know sit by the TV and not move. Uh, under 61 and a half was sharp mm. there. Uh, we're down to 59 and a half right now, but that's basically all one side. I just got a ton of very respectable money and a couple of Sharps on the under that one. We're down at 59 and a half, almost no money on the over. Um, Akron, very strong play this week uh, based on the Sharps action. I've got a couple of guys on Akron plus three and a half. They're at home to Central Michigan. Central Michigan's minus three, uh, dog 15 now. But Akron plus three minus one, uh, sorry, plus three and a half minus 110 was very sharp. Uh, Oklahoma State, the total there. Also sharp. Uh, this is like we just got pounded on the total here. You know, I mentioned that every now and then us bookmakers get it right. Well, this totally got totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oklahoma at Kansas. The sharp money came in at under 66. We just kept getting pounded, pounded, pounded. We're sitting down to 61 right now, and I've got a, a grand total of three wagers on the over, mm-hmm. which is absolutely nothing. Yeah, just nothing at all. So we're very one-sided on the total there, and it was sharp action that went under the 66. 
Uh, Florida Atlantic, perhaps the sharpest play on the board based on the fact wow. that I've got four different four different sharps all on the same side. Florida Atlantic, they came in at plus four, uh, plus four minus 15, plus three and a half, plus three and a half minus 15. All Florida Atlantic, they're at home to Florida International. Florida International is down to minus two and a half point favorite, but all that money came in, like I said, plus four and plus three and a half. But that, to have that many guys all on one side is, is, is you know, that's, that's, that's very, very strong. Right. Um, last play as well, Idaho is another one. I mean, I'm throwing these ugly teams at you but yeah I Idaho love at, at, yeah I mean it's like it is what it is you know I yeah, can't make sure. this stuff up but uh, Idaho at New Mexico State is another big uh, big sharp side they started coming in on Idaho first hit was minus three and a half jumped up to minus five got hit again minus five and a half another hit from so that's again that's three different guys in on Idaho our lines all the way up to minus seven minus 15 and they're at New Mexico State as a, as a favorite there uh, that line might go up to seven and a half I mean I've just got not you know no nibbles really on New Mexico State at home but uh, probably the two strongest plays on the board uh, the, the Florida Atlantic play and Idaho very interesting stuff this week Brent and uh, several sides taking two-way sharp action Brent from bet DSI we appreciate it as always talk to you again tomorrow for NFL week eight